Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and welcome to Introduction to Business uh, Organization. Um, you're either taking me in an online class, you're taking me to face-to-face -face class. I teach at a community college, uh, and this is a summarization of what we already discussed in our lectures, in our forums, utilizing uh, the integrated software uh, that comes with the publisher's uh, uh, book. Uh, you've read the material, and you've... Uh, uh, Finish the chapter and now you're just looking over, you utilize my mind maps, you have to the second tier, you can print out, uh, you can find that in the Blackboard course management system. I teach at the College of Lake County, if you're in, uh, if you're Lake County or in uh, Harbor College or if you're in uh, Northern Cook County. Uh, so what you really look at, it, a lot of people look at the video and they say, hey, I, I like the way I teach, so sign up for the classes, that helps me pay off my student loans, uh, it helps the school, it helps the community. Uh, but if you, for some reason, can't, uh, uh, you're not in the area and you just, you know, the internet is a wide uh, uh, media that uh, people utilize, uh, look up your local community college or even a, a four-year university, but you get a better bang for your money as we're talking uh, securities and financial markets at a community college because it'll be more specific to your, uh, uh, your needs in that geographic area. And you help the community. You're already paying taxes either as a, a resident of the community or as a business owner. Okay, so let's go on to Chapter 19. Now, Chapter 19, we're going to talk about securities uh, uh, markets for financing and investing opportunity. And remember, you'll be utilizing, you need some of this information because you'll be creating a feasibility study for me. And it's basically come up with a new product, a new line, or something different, uh, a, a new market. But you have to see, not that, uh, you, we're looking at two aspects in this, in my feasibility study. Uh, one is that you had the money to start the business. What I'm more concerned is, if we got the money to start the business, how do I sustain the sustainability and keep the business uh, running? Now, some of the things to keep the business running is maybe I have to do some equity financing. Uh, maybe so I need, that means uh, I have to share, uh, sell some shares if I'm a corporation or bring another partnership or I have to take a loan out, some kind of bonds or, or uh, basically it's an IOU. Uh, so how do I do this? I'm just assuming that uh, the business is, is a, 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 what do you call it, a chapter S or a small corporation. So uh, this would make sense. But even if you're a, like an LLC or a sole proprietorship or a... Um, for lack of better words, a partnership, you may still want to invest in other companies as another source of income to help your business financially succeed in its ups and downs because you have collateral, you have uh, uh, income coming into some annuities or some bonds that you've uh, purchased and uh, they're paying you in, uh, interest uh, for, uh, for utilizing your uh, investment. So there's a lot you could do here. So let's go on here. Open up your concept maps. Remember, you already looked at the concept map. We discussed this in the class. You looked at the software. You uh, read the book. And now you just kind of come on and see if I could put it all together. And what did I miss? And remember, some of us are instructors. Some of us are coming back here because we're business owners. Some of us are professionals, and we have to have some professional growth. No matter what, you're still learning. And even if you know the stuff, it's a good refresher to say, oh, yeah, now I remember. And it ties things back together. After a while, we get a little dull. Remember, even your night, you got to sharpen it every little bit. Uh, every once in a while, you got to sharpen the brain. Keep it in tune. Make sure you didn't miss anything. You remember things. And now you see what changed and how do I do the adjustment. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to open this up a little bit bigger. So open up your concept maps. Remember, you already have a lot of stuff uh, uh, writing. We only have this chapter, one more chapter. We're done, and then the paper is going to be due uh, on here. So let's see. I think I usually have about like uh, 200... I think 200 in this one would be perfect. Okay, so that's what are function of security. When I look at security uh, things, I'm looking at bonds and I'm looking at the uh, stocks, okay? The, the, uh, it's just general. Anything I do to uh, attain uh, uh, capital or cash. Okay, so I'm looking at long-term financing my business and places to buy and sell securities or IOUs or something because, yeah, you know, where do I get my financing from? Okay, so an organized securities exchanges, and these are the main ones. You got the New York Stock Exchange, I'm not going to go through it. Remember, you can look at the book, uh, 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 more American Exchange. This is where you sell the stocks uh, or buy the stocks, and it depends where I'm listed at. New York is uh, Stock Exchange is the Otis, and then over the counter, when I look at the stocks not listed on national exchanges, NASDAQ is basically all online, National Association of Securities and Dealers. 
uh, National Electronic System, there's 3,300. Nice kind of uh, things to do today. Microsoft, Intel trade there. You would assume they would because they're uh, uh, strictly an online business, for lack of a better word. And corporate and government bonds are traded there. Okay, just in case you ask, so now you know. Now, here are the top stocks exchanges worldwide, not just in the U.S. Remember, you got to start thinking globally. We're at the end now. Globally, globally. I buy or sell. Where can I make the best? Where can I utilize my investment and get the best return? Okay, so here's some next one. You have the NASDAQ, uh, Euronext, uh, NASDAQ, uh, London Exchange, Tokyo. I'm just going to hit on a couple here because I got the links on here. And the reason I do the links, uh, so you can look at it here. I mean, the links are in there. Look at it. Look what you have. You have information, uh, IPO we're going to be talking about, stock directory, uh, electronic tra uh, transfer fund, bond directory, everything you need here. Look at it. The author provided your links. Blackboard, I provided your links. Look at them. That's how you learn about stocks. I can't spend the time. I'm ready to discuss this and we look at some of the sites. I just want to bring it in. Let's look at some of the London. Let's look at the Tokyo stock. And when I look at the Tokyo stock and see it's an English version. Tokyo, a lot of the stock markets, they're global. So they'll have it to the version that you as an investor want to invest in. Come on. Okay, so let's see the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Okay. Uh, uh, new. Uh, here's the website. We'll redirect you to it in five seconds. Da, 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 da. Oh, there we go. So you got the new one. Market news, data statistics, where they have a lot of data about the different stock, derivatives, and they'll talk about this. I'm a little slow it here. I think my Comcast usually on the weekend slow. So I'm going to kind of close it off. But again, look at it. It's the same thing, it's just to do different rules and regulations. Even though when we talk from our accounting classes, there's more of an international flavor that everyone's playing by the same uh, uh, rule set, and that's going, because as we're getting more uh, connected, in, uh, uh, we're more of a flat society, so we have to trade stocks. Look at the world as one big trading, uh, uh, as one big uh, uh, plane. You could go, go anywhere, and the internet uh, makes that available for us. So I'll close that on here, and let's go on here. Okay, and the other one is the, the, the German Stock Exchange. Okay, now Jobs Act. When I look at the Jobs Act, and I open this up, what did the Jobs Act say? The Jobs Act was giving small business a jump on funding. The large multi-corporations, I've always talked before, really have no loyalty to any nation. They have loyalty to the shareholders. They're socially responsible to the nation, but if, let's say, the U.S. market is down, they go south to China. If that market is down, they go to Tokyo, they go uh, to Hong Kong. It doesn't make a difference. They're, that's how they work. Those are multinationals. The whole world, if it's, look at us, if business is slowing down, Illinois, I go to Wisconsin. Nothing against Illinois, but I got to make money to, for my shareholders. I got to keep the lights on, silver for combat. Uh, 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 basically keep the business flowing okay but so uh, so where you want to improve on the balance of trade where you want to improve uh, on an employment rate and stimulate the economies from the small business 90 percent or 85 percent of all the jobs and all the potential new growth is going to be from small business with locally remember small businesses have to think locally and globally at the same time I may be local, but I'm thinking globally, how can I sell, how can I invest money? I, even if I'm not selling, can I get a better deal instead of putting a bank here? Maybe I put the bank uh, in Tokyo or China. As long as it's insured and I have my rights protected. Remember, I have to play by the rules of that host country where the bank is associated it, where the bank has its charter from, okay? Even though they can operate it, uh, here, they have to still follow certain rules, okay? So giving small business uh, 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 the Jobs Act to ease small business and financing problems. So the biggest thing is financing problem when we had the, the recession we're coming out is that the credit money's out there, but it's so hard to get it and people don't want to take the, the banks are holding on to it. They don't want to lose it anymore, which is bad. How do you stimulate the economy? You're a bank. Give me money. Money. It's like an insurance company. I get an accident. Don't drop me. I like the commercials on there. Okay, so, but now the Securities Exchange, we'll talk about that. They're basically ones who are looking at to uh, make sure that uh, everyone's playing by the same set of rules here within the U.S., or wherever they have contact. Raises uh, from uh, uh, 500 to 2,000 number of shareholders. A company, you know, it used to go to 500. Uh, after 500, you had to report. A company could have before it must register to register stock with the Securities and Exchange. So I don't have to go through all the paperwork. I could go up to 2,000 new shareholders. That gives a lot of financial ability. You know, the motor got a lot. 2,000 is not too bad without me doing all the uh, filing. Allows equity uh, crowdfunding through brokers or portals. 
and we discussed that, expanded abilities of private companies to raise capital through limited stock offering. Remember, everything is to stimulate the job, and how do I do it? I had to get the small business to capital so they can buy inventory, because we need our inventory six months before we actually be able to sell it in most cases, but I need that, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, finance, I need the cash, I can't buy nothing. You know. Okay, now the six years in exchange commission, basically the federal agency, responsible for regulating the various stocks exchanges. Securities Exchange Act of uh, 1934 gave it that uh, power or, uh, or created it. Uh, uh, prospectus, condensed version of economic financial information about the company must be filed with the security exchange before issuing stock. That's why it has helped on this other one here. When you look at the Jobs Act, it gave from 500 shares where I didn't have to uh, um, uh, file anything uh, up to 2,000. So it, it, I don't have to do all the paperwork. I'm not that large. It's not going to hurt the economy, but I need the cash and it gives me another uh, avenue of uh, uh, obtaining funds that would be considered debt finance, DPT, okay? Okay, uh, perplexus is to be sent to investors, okay? Inside trading, and this is just something, information that's illegal, there's a big thing of going, what is really illegal, or is it just advice, because it got computers, does he or she have it? So, yeah, and, but here's the bottom line. In a fair market, if you have some information about a stock that's going under, or a company that's going uh, 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 public, or has a new idea, or a new uh, patent, or something that's going to really revolutionize the industry and the stocks will go up, but you know it before it's made publicly, and now you buy all the shares while it's still a small company, that gives you an unfair advantage over me in the free market, because I didn't have that information, and you are penalized for that, because you're working for a company, you know it, and it hasn't been released. So you, everyone's got to be fair, uh, play fairly. So benefit unfairly, key wording, penalties and imprisonment, if they could see it. You know, if a little guy sometimes tells you, here's a hunch, I only buy a thousand shares, it's not going to really hurt me, but I'm buying a million shares, I'm in a company, or the company's going bankrupt, and I'm getting rid of them, while everyone thinks the company is solvent, and they're not. And the government is looking, whoa, he's the president, he got rid of him, and then he went bankrupt. That is not fair, that uh, you should take the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the... Uh, uh, the losses like with everybody else okay now investment banker if i look at that they assist with the sales of new securities they underwrite new issues of security to make sure you know uh, that you actually have the capital how would i know i'm buying a share i could have game consulting game hot dog game whatever george anti machaki what could i have out there but i don't have nothing in there i'm just selling sh uh, stocks you wouldn't know it unless it's underwritten. It, it, it's almost like um um just to make sure, you know, when you buy the housing and, and uh, they do a uh, they, they, they check to make sure that you have, uh, there's no other liens or anything against you, okay? Okay, sales to institutional investors. Okay, let's talk about common stock. Now, we talked a little bit about common stocks and some disadvantages uh, when we talked about accounting, financial management. So, this is a good summarization. We, you know, so real quickly, common stock, shares of ownership within the company, real easy. Let me make this just a little bit bigger. I think we can make it a little bit bigger here. For those of you looking at your smartphones, I know I, I try to. Okay, there we go. I did come a little picture. It's the voice. Remember, I'm live. Those of you, this is the first time you looked at me. Make sure you sign up for my classes. Uh, um, I'm a contractor uh, uh, for both the College of Lake County and Harper. And ask for Dr. George Machaki, of course, he's thinking. So they keep on uh, uh, saying, hey, George, we got, they're asking for you, so we'll, we'll rehire you again. Okay? Part of business, financials. Come on, come on. Investment, invest in me, I invest in you. We all learn. Okay, so uh, stock certificates, and a lot of times you don't really see the certificates anymore. It's an electronic version. You get a statement comes out. Evidence of stock owner. Jeez, spell that one wrong. Ownership or lives, so I would have corrected that. Okay, now dividends are part of the firm's profits that the firm may distribute to shareholders as either cash or additional shares. It doesn't have to, but it usually does because it could do what we talk about later on about retained earnings, okay? And we talked about that. Now, common stock versus preferred. We're going to talk later on about preferred stock. So I'll just get rid of this right here. Uh, uh, all right, because I know I put it someplace else. I adjusted the, uh, my, my mind map, so it's kind of cleaning up as we're going live. Um, effective and efficient, it keeps the cost down. Okay, what's some of the advantages of common stock? Okay, you know, you've got it. Uh, stockholders are firm's owners. 
So they never had to be repaid for the investments. I own them. It's my business. As the business goes good, but I still take the downfall if the business goes down. There's no legal obligation to pay dividends. I have voting rights. I can bring in, remember, I don't bring in the management. I can bring in a board of directors, and they hire the management. That gives me that that uh, 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 protection that I'm not liable for my personal asset because I don't do anything with the management. I, just, uh, uh, I am like a silent partner or a limited partner, for lack of better words. I am considered an owner. But uh, to, to, to some extent, let's just leave it at that. Okay, issuing stocks can improve a firm's uh, uh, can can improve a firm's. Uh, I must have forgot something on there. Uh, uh, standing uh, financially does not create that. Now here's some of the disadvantages. Dividends are paid after tax and profits. So after I have that, I pay the dividends. And I get taxed again. So they're and they're not tax uh, uh, not tax deductible. You know, double taxation, we learn in accounting, the government got to make its money, not, you're not going to change that. Okay, management works to keep stockholders happy, right? That's a disadvantage. I got to, uh, they don't want to pay my bills, so it's something I may not agree with them, but that's where I have to do shareholders well. Shareholders have the right to vote for the company's board of directors, and issuing uh, shares of stocks can alter the, uh, uh, the control of the firm. Okay, now there's two types of stocks, the common stocks and the preferred stock. Okay, if I look at the common stock, most basic, Okay, I'll move it over just a little bit here. Uh, uh, owners have right to vote, board of directors, shares and profit, dividend. Now, preferred stock's a little different. Okay, I gotta go here. I just need a check mark. Life. Owners are given preference in payment of company dividends before common stocks are distributed. Before I give anything else, but what do I give up? I give up my voting rights. Okay, so I give up my voting rights, but I get the dividends. If for some reason a company does not make any dividends within that quarter, it is cumulative, and we're going to talk about different preferred stocks, and it depends on the terms and conditions for the preferred stock. Let's just look at this. I get paid out, but I give up my voting rights, okay? Before anything else, so they have to pay me out. Now, the different types of preferred stock, callable, I got a preferred stock, I could call it back and say, hey, I'm going to make you a regular stock owner. I could convert it back into a, 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 a regular stock, but I can't go back once I convert it state, and it's cumulative. When I look at cumulative, that means if they don't pay out this quarter, next quarter is, it just adds up. They owe me till they're able to pay out, and it's part of par value of the stock before they pay out any dividends or anything else to anybody else. But I give up the voting right. Sorry, excuse me. Okay, let's look at bonds. Now, when I look at bonds, remember securities or bonds or stocks, bonds are considered the stepchild of the stock market. It's considered debt financing. A corporate certificate indicating that the investor lent money to a firm or a government. I put parentheses there. If you don't mind. At least you know I'm live. Come on. All right, uh, I'm not reading off a script. We're doing this. The uh, the principle is the face value of the bond. Okay, the interest is payments to the bond issuer makes to the bond holders to compensate them for the use of the money. Just, all right, when you get interest in the stock, uh, you put money in a savings account, the bank gives you a little interest. A bond gives you a little bit more because you can't pull it out. You lock it in for a quarter or certain, uh, whatever the terms or conditions of the bonds are. Okay, what are some disadvantages and advantages of bonds? Okay, you have the coupon interest rates. This is not a disadvantage. This is some information. Cost of borrowing dollars, high high risk, higher rate, just like on the charge card. The principal is in denomination of 1000 You can't buy a bond for 50 It has to be in the denomination of 1000 This amount you owe. Maturity date, it has a date that you have to pay in full. When I look at the coupons, do I have it in here? Coupons, I pay the coupons. So it's like I pay my... Uh, a car payment, I pay you know only with a bond. I don't pay the, I don't get, I don't pay anything towards the principal. I get the interest paid back to me, but at the end I gotta pay. You know if, if I'm in a company, I gotta pay the, the bond holder their interest for letting me use their money. But then at the end of the bond, I gotta give them all their money principal back. Okay, I return the loan. All right. Okay. Now, what are some advantages? Bond holders are not creditors. Okay. Not, but bond holders. I'm sorry. Are creditors? They're not owners of the firm. They cannot vote on corporate matters. They're just like a signing partner. I just want to make an investment. I owe you. Okay. Bond interest is taxable, is tax deductible, better than the stock and the dividends. That's why a lot of people go. It's another option when you're looking at financial management. Temporary source of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, funds and eventually repaid. Bonds can be repaid before the maturity date. If they're callable, they get call back and then I want my money back. Some of the disadvantages. Bonds increase the debt. So it may upset my... Uh, 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 off, uh, upset or uh, uh, 
reduce or, li or, or lower my credit score. That means I got to pay more when I do uh, issue other bonds. Bond, uh, paying interest on bonds is a legal obligation. If interest is not paid, bondholders can take legal action to court and force me uh, on the maturity date. Bond ratings, and here's a bond rating. If I look at a bond rating, A rating, the book did a nice job. Sanders and Poor's, uh, Fitch rating, Moody's, you know, AA, just one, you know, it's a little different, highest rating. The lowest rating, C, D, D, lowest rating. I think the uh, uh, Chicago is, is uh, I don't know how low they got. I think they're, eh, I think they're B, poor, high risk. Uh, they dropped. I think they're like a B, and uh, they're down their uh, lowest, uh, like a D, uh, maybe higher. Uh, they, hopefully they went up, okay? That's the chart. I don't have any stocks in a bond, but it's just something a lot of people do. Okay, different classes of corporate bonds. You have corporation can issue two types of classes. One is unsecured debiture. Unsecured means not backed by anything. It's just an IOU like a credit card. A secured is backed by collateral, land, or equipment, or a mortgage. Okay, that's what you're doing. Uh, okay, types of bonds we have here. What's happening here? Types of bonds. Okay, you have various charts of bonds issued. I'm going to put this on there. Here's a chart. They got U.S. government bonds, T bonds, Treasury. We went through all this. I'll leave the chart open. Stop me. Look at it. Yeah, and look, if I look at Treasury notes, up to thousand to uh, uh, to hundred thousand, uh, Treasury bonds thousand to hundred thousand, municipal bonds didn't say hundred thousand, probably a little bit less. The Yankee bond, but uh, uh, it would be a little lower. Okay, and, and then so, so then you got the regular corporate bonds that's one to twenty years, higher yields than government, but a little more riskier. If the government goes under, it means the currency is useless. So why worry about it? You're already broke. You already got other issues. Municipal bonds went to 40 years, good for high tax bracket. They were safe because of the municipalities kept on deferring or hitting the pension is what's hurting uh, many of them. And then U.S. Treasury bonds we talked about, they're already on there, okay? Two years to three years back by maximum safety. Okay, now special uh, bond features, you have the sinking fund is reserve money, uh, 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 reserve account set up to ensure that uh, you have enough money will be available to repay bondholders on a maturity date, uh, put money away to pay the interest, callable, again we talked about, permit bond issues to pay off the principal before the bond a maturity date, because I got the money, I don't need the money in it now, and the interest rates are higher, I'll call it back and say, here's your principal, oh you can't do that, yes I could, because that's part of my terms and condition, remember, it's from finance manager. You could eliminate that terms and condition, but most bonds have this. And convertible, again, allows bondholders to convert their bonds into shares. Cannot go back. Once you convert, you're there for always, okay? Now, so uh, special bonds, so buying securities, you have you can buy it through a stockholder, a registered representative who works as a market intermediary to buy and sell securities, online training services. Let me get down here, it's a little slow. Okay, you have offers securities training services to online buyers, buy and sell stocks and bonds, T Trade, American Trade, uh, E Trade, Stock Trade. I have these in here, but my internet's going a little bit. We already discussed this in the classroom, but go in here. I left the link out here. Stop it. I don't know if you could click on it with the concept mask because you're looking at it as a PDF file, but just copy it, type it in, and it's real easy. And then you know, save it on your uh, um, on your computer as one of your favorites, and then you could have it. They have uh, videos, they talk to you, they'll ch ch show you, they'll explain a little lectures, how to trade, what's going on for the novice, for the more experienced individual. Uh, just be more careful on that, okay? And then we could do everything. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, uh, five investment criteria that you should be aware of. Investment risk, so you're looking at the risks. Chance investment will end up worthless. Any kind of investment, that's the risk you take in finance or stock or even in a bond market if somebody's not going to pay up. But you, you do, uh, most cases you do fairly well going forward. All, uh, hopefully you've done your homework, you've done your research, you have insurance, you either dump some hedging, you're taking me for international finance, some other finance class, that you prepare in case something will go on so you, you find that balance, okay? Remember, the higher the risk, the higher return, but the higher probability that you it'd be worthless okay so yield expect a rate of return on investments dividends and interest that and the yield is after you paid everything your broker fee everything else is what do i get here now i have it that's your yield not all the other things that you forgot to deduct what did i make that's your return on your investment that's your yield on your uh, on your investment 
Okay, duration, the, the next one you're looking at, the length of the time money is tied up, and how much is that worth, because you're paying interest, but you no longer have ability to utilize that money. You can use it as collateral, but it's not yours. You, it's out of circulation, for lack of better words. Okay, and then liquidity, how quickly it could be turned back into cash if you need it, and then you have to look at the uh, tax uh, uh, consequences. Okay, now when we look at diversification, is buying several different types of investments, and remember, stocks or bonds, to spread the risk of investing. If diversifying investors should put away, and here's, this is just recommended. You could, you could have a different, if you have a better handle on um, government bonds, you feel more comfortable, you have 35%, 40 There is no uh, 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 one correct way of doing that, okay? It depends on you. Okay, so 25 uh, bonds, you know, government bonds, dividend paying stocks, 10% of the national mutual funds, and the rest in saving accounts. Always have something so you could, uh, uh, and look at the liquidity. How quickly I could get this back into cash if I need it. Even if I had to pay a penalty, how quickly could I uh, convert it? Would I sell it or do something else with it? Okay. All right, so primary investment uh, services helps uh, in investing advice, helps with 401k plans, retirement planning, tax planning, and estate planning, and education planning. Well, they're just investment services that uh, you could utilize. And, you know, if you buy stocks or bonds or something through some of these um, institutions, they uh, uh, will help you a little bit along the line to understand it. But you still have to be... Uh, knowledgeable on your own okay so now perception of the uh, uh, of the market if i look at the perception they talk about two different things they talk about the bull market investor believes the stocks will go up are going up and here's a picture of a bull you always see the bull never see a bear and the reason and then let's look at the bear market investor expects stock prices to decline and the reason they use the bull is wild you never know what's going on uh, 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 the market's uh, vo volatility you know is very volatile uh, so you don't know which way the bull's going to go this way, that way. A bear, he still could be stunted, a little more graceful, a little bit more slower. And when they get a little bear, it starts going down. The bear are kind of a little hibernate a little bit. So they utilize those. When they say bullish market, stocks are going up. Bear markets on the decline, the bear's ready to go uh, hibernating. But it could wake up. You never know. Okay? Okay, now selecting stocks. When I look at selecting stocks, you're looking at capital gains. So you look into stocks that have a positive difference between the price you paid and what you bought the stock and what you sell it for that's your capital gain so if i'm buying it now you're looking i can see i'm forecasting think the stock in another five years or whatever is going to go up fine then i'm making money so i'm investing now and looking what my capital gains are because i'm going to sell it once it hits a plateau or what i think is a plateau you know you, you got to know when to sell them and when to buy them all right okay and when to keep them uh, I almost feel like I'm uh, playing cards, but it is kind of a gambling, it's kind of a, but uh, uh, nothing's certain, remember, it's still a risk, but uh, as you understand the market, and you see indicators or flags, that's when you see the stock market, you're going down, people are being more cautious, getting rid of some of the high risk ones, keeping more of the, what we talk about the blue chip stocks, okay, blue chip stocks, well known stocks like Coca-Cola, Penny stocks less than two dollars, blue chips versus penny stock. Uh, which one you could get cheaper? Which one has a higher growth potential? May not pay out, but if something happens, it has a higher uh, uh, probability in the long run. Okay, growth versus income that depends on you. Do you want um, uh, uh, capital gain versus dividends? This should have been over here. Sorry, okay, and capital gain. Oh, I got it. okay, I had too many. All right. Now, what, when you talk about stock split, is an action by a company that gives stockholders two or more shares of additional stocks for every share they own, okay? And what it does, basically, is the shares, uh, remember, you have two things. You have initial public offerings, that's the, the, what the company is selling the shares. You have two markets. You have the initial public offering and the secondary market. And what happens in the secondary market because investors buy the shares and it appreciates in value. Same thing if you buy a house and you purchase the house and uh, it's this amount in five years it's worth more. But you know, so you could sell it. Uh, you're making the money comes to you, not to the, the to the developer. So it's a secondary market. So when a new home comes in there, they have to look at the the market what it was it selling. So now the stocks out there. You have your primary. Now the company needs. Uh, a more initial public offering it doesn't want to take out loans so it's going to uh, uh, sell stocks 
additional stock. But the stocks are like $500, let's say, a share. And that's a little bit high for uh, the average person because of the economy or whatever. So what the company says, we don't want to mess up the secondary market. We know what's out there because we don't want to look the value. The shareholders will be upset. So what I do for the shareholders, I say for every share you hold, uh, I split it in half. So now you have two shares worth $250 instead of one share worth 500 So now you, you're, you're whole, but now uh, when they issue the new share, the initial public offering, they have a higher probability of people being able to buy the shares at 250 versus buying them at uh, 500 That's the rationale. They need the money and they want to uh, uh, please both markets. We discussed that in the class. So you should understand if not look at the reading and uh, stop and, and take a closer look at it. But now the stock splits cause no change in the firm's ownership structure and no change in investment. It's the same amount of investors only they own more shares. That's all. You know what I mean? So investment value stays constant. Firms can never be forced to split the, sh the stocks. They only do that when they want more initial public offering. Hey, or do you want to show the value? Some stocks they don't want uh, 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 a certain class of individuals, so they keep it high, and it's only for the wealthy or for the uh, well to do. But that depends on the strategy of the organization and the management and the board of directors, what they're going to do, okay? Now, you hear the concept of buying stocks on sh uh, on, uh, uh, on margin. So if I'm looking at buying stocks at mar on margins, uh, for lack of better words, what am I doing? I borrowing some stock purchases at cost from the brokerage firm. I'm borrowing them on margin mm -hmm. at cost. What the brokerage firm does, the margin portion must be paid with their own money of the stock purchase price that the, uh, 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 of the stock purchase price of the investor that the investor uh, uh, list right? I'm buying a, uh, on a margin at his cost he's selling it and when I'm buying it on a margin I'm figuring that it's going to go up and then I'll sell it so when I pay him back I'm paying him at the lower cost but I'm making a profitability uh, when I uh, sell or trade if the broker issues a margin call because for some reason the uh, the market's uh, questionable and they say hey I've got these on cost I want it back I don't want to take the I don't want to get lost I'm calling it back give me my money the investor has to come up with the money to cover the losses because remember he brought in a margin he's going to go up and now he has to buy it whatever the cost is if he called it back and the stock price is going back he bought it this thing he's stuck with it he has to buy it at the higher price so he has to come up with the losses. You have to know what you're doing in the stocks. You have to remember from the uh, financial management terms and conditions. Okay, now types of security markets, you got primary market, we talked about that. An initial public market is uh, 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 trading stocks before. I should have moved this back here. Hang on a second, I'm fixing this up. Class, I'm going to move this over here. So it's a little bit er uh, earlier, okay? All right. So next time I have to do it. Okay, stock quotes. You look at stock quotes. How do people know so they're looking at the high, low prices, company name, last dividend share? And what you're doing, you're looking at what transacts. You're looking at the profit er earning ratio. Did it change? Total number of shares. How much did it change within the last uh, day? If it's sh if it's going up, people are buying it. Maybe I should uh, hang on to it or should I sell it? If it's going down, why are people selling the stock? Something going on with it. What's going on? All right, uh, uh, so I'm looking at what's going on. I'm looking at the closing price. I'm looking at the next change of the prices. Uh, seeing a uh, handout and Microsoft chopped. It. So it looks something like this. People looked at it from the NASDAQ. You know, here's the previous close. Here's the open. So it wasn't that much of a change. Here's the bid by 600. Here's the asking price. Okay, uh, easy target. Here's the average volume. This doesn't make any difference if I'm looking at days range. I'm looking at uh, dividends per earnings per uh, share. So I'm looking at you know, a, a, a profit earn. I'm looking how much it changed and what is the change it. So if you're looking at investors, and the computers will give me a, a high and low, and that's some things we're going to talk about a little later on about programming. But when I'm looking at most investors, they have only 5, 10 shares, so they can see the fluctuation. You can see it's like a thermometer. What's going? It's going in what direction? What should I do? Uh, when, uh, how should I react? Okay? And now, top financial news uh, sites, and we talked about that, Yahoo Finance, and I've got the, uh, here's all the, uh, what do you call it, the, the links, look it out, I'm not going to go in there, they'll give you a good, I'm already running over, 
uh, try to keep this underneath an hour. It's just a summarization. We discussed this in class. We looked at the sites. We played with the sites. You had some homework to do with the sites. You're doing fine. Understanding the bond quotation. Here's the chart. And again, it's set up uh, again a little differently. Uh, We've discussed this, so look at the chart, look at the interest rates, and that's how you, this one's on Goldman Sachs uh, Incorporated, okay? I'll stop it, stop it, remember you can always stop me, fast forward, if you're not sure, look at it, look at your notes, look at the book, and then uh, make sure you understand that this way you're prepared for the exam that's coming up there. Okay, when I look at mutual funds, okay, mutual funds, uh, I look at mutual funds, an organization buys the stocks and bonds, and then sells the shares in those securities to the public, pools investors' monies in different companies. Pool funds and investors' money, you know, the mutual funds, and buy stocks according to the fund's purposes. Now, some mutual funds, if I'm looking at, they may just be an uh, uh, energy stock, uh, fund. Some may be something to save the environment. Some may be for some cause. So remember, the mutual funds, so they buy all kinds of stocks for companies who have the same uh, fund's purpose, for lack of better words, okay? And some may be just growth, some may be investment, but the other funds are in there. There's a lot of out there. I'm just getting, you were just touching, you know, this is just an overview and this introduction of business for just to understand as your company's growing so you understand the terminology and how it affects companies uh, uh, attaining, uh, what do you call it, uh, financing or uh, making money on the money that they already have, okay? And an exchange uh, trade funded uh, collection of stocks and bonds uh, that are traded on securities exchanges but are traded more like individual stocks and bonds and the index funds are a range of stocks and the diversification okay mutual fund quotations we have this and i had that over here with the chart i think i had it twice so uh, let me go back on here i'll leave this open remember look at it in case you forgot it or just the first time take a look at it if you're not sure click in there or you look at some of the research sites and they have training they'll have uh, 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 many vid uh, videos uh, they'll explain a little more detail more than if you didn't pick it up in a classroom or in the lectures. Okay, if I'm looking at brokerage, I just show that in full service, but a little bit higher than that. I think this was about three, four years ago. Discount and online services, it could be higher a little bit. Comparing investments, and then you have a comparing chart. So if I look at the chart, it's good. I'm not going to go through it. We talked about this in class. But you look at different investment bond for first, that comment, uh, electronic uh, 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 fund transfers, low you know, degree of risk, low, medium, high, medium, medium, steady, little, good. Uh, you know, growth. So you have a general idea, and then the, basically that's what uh, they talk: stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estates, and then high risk the stocks and margin, junk bonds, and uh, certain commodities. Warning: your stockbroker is cheating. Uh, you know, nothing that is good. If you're always making money, promises, etc., returns, you uh, on usually uh, volatile uh, investments, guarantees against losses. I'm not talking about hedging. It's a little different uh, strategy, but he himself says no matter losses, we'll uh, cover it. Uh, claims, I'm not talking about the government that has different losses than insurance, but uh, remember, your broker. Uh, irregularities in account statements and high-pressure sales taxes. Okay, we're almost done. Oh, geez, only a little bit more. Measures of investments. Uh, Dow Jones is a good ma uh, measure. It shows the directions of the market at 30 blue chip stocks. Of the big ones are going down. You know, the, the blue chip stocks are your, uh, you know, American. These are, uh, I forgot to have the date on here. They change depending on what's going on. Uh, tobacco is still good. National AT&T, you know, original uh, Dow was 12, and now the current Dow has changed. Which one survived? J.P. Morgan surviving with all the credit and all the fines they're doing, McDonald's are doing, all these kind of survive. So these are the large ones. If these start, if, if stockholders start losing confidence in these 30, the indicated is that the market is going downward. It's going to be a bearish market or it's going to be a bullish market. You know, it's an indicator. It's all of this. That's a guarantee. Uh, now, but what they basically, oh, let's see, who's up to down measurement? But what they're trying to tell you is that it shows the Dow Jones average, it shows the blue chips, but it tells you that it's not the best, okay? So other than the Dow Jones, Dow Jones critics say 30 companies out too small, suggest using the Standards and Poor 500. Standards and Poor 500 tracks the performance of 400. Larger pool, remember some statistics, larger pool, higher probability, 40 financial institutions, 40 public utilities, and 20 transportation stocks. So it gives you a better indicator of what's going out in the market. Okay, now ups and downs in the market, program trading, give uh, instruction computers to automatically sell, enterprise stocks dips to a certain point to avoid potential losses, 
It's doing it. It's, it's some people are playing with the program. They're indirectly selling and instantly buying it at little small because it does so quickly and making money. So what happened at us believe program trading was the result that caused the turmoil in 1987. Exchanges created mechanism to restrict program trading. So there's a uh, uh, the, 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 they already embedded software to minimize that. It's still there, but uh, not to the same point. Who's at fault for economic crisis? Wall Street, we always blame Wall Street, issues exotic securities, paid ex excessive compensation based on bonuses, investment banks got uh, uh, securities exchange relaxed capital requirements, Main Street, you and me, Americans would be on our means, lenders gave favorable loan to home uh, builders, Greedy homeowners took out equity loans that they couldn't pay back. Teaser mortgage rates to let people uh, uh, live uh, large. Okay? Now, Washington government, Graham and Alicia Bealey Act, allowed commercial investment bankers to partner. That's what they, they were separate. So it opened up a whole new market. Some didn't know uh, how to play the game. Other ones didn't. It brought more money. It was to stimulate the economy. Mm, didn't work as well. It was be more, uh, you know, by the free market trade. Housing interest rates were kept low. Community Reinvestment Act forced lending people with bad credit to get homes. Okay, so now cleaning up house. What do we have here? The Dodd Frank Act, and they got the chart. He basically, if I look at it, that's why accounting is up in demand. Uh, gave government power to seize, put derivatives and complicated financial loans, including those packages, so far under strict government oversight and require hedge funds to register as a secure exchange. So it's out there, most sweeping the chain, not the best. It's a start. They went too far at the end. It controls the large one, but it put a big burden on the small and medium businesses with all the restrictions and everything else. I said more time at paperwork and regulations that you do, uh, that uh, small businesses do, then uh, they can never upset the economy the way. Uh, the large bankers would okay so now i'm going to go in here so we finished and we're down to one level okay we've got two classes of stock let me bring it back so we could view this and bring it back at 100 percent. and here we go this is our uh, we covered everything on here everything you wanted to know about stocks and securities again uh, this is chapter 19, Securities Markets for Financing and Investing Opportunities, uh, part of the introduction to business or corporate or standing businesses from small to large. Uh, we have one more chapter, I think chapter 20, uh, the banking system or uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, how it affects uh, 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 businesses, all businesses, depending on what uh, their policies are for the future. Uh, yeah, you because know, they control the money, uh, the interest rate, the discount rate, and uh, certain things with uh, 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 the creation of uh, cash. Okay, so we've covered the jobs act, we covered bonds, we know securities are bonds and stocks. We covered everything else. Uh, stop it if you're not sure, replay it, look at the book. Uh, you have a good summarization. You looked at it, most of you by this time you're doing very well with the concept map. You've added, you, you, uh, you, uh, some of you might add a little bit, but the less you have to add, it means you've covered the material, you're able to pick up the main points, and now you've taken it from the short term memory to the long term memory. All right, so my name is Dr. Jordan Michaki. Uh, 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 if you're looking at this, uh, look me up at the community colleges that I teach. Um, uh, uh, ask for me. So, uh, and I hope this was uh, uh, you've learned something. It's a summarization, and uh, I know there's a lot. You could take me or some other instructors uh, uh, for finance or international finance. It gives you a little more uh, uh, understanding. Remember, in this course, it's uh, every chapter is a full three or four full 16-week courses. We are just giving you a general idea how all businesses operate in finance and understand the financial. Like it or not, is money is what makes the business go. Money is why you're doing it. Uh, for investments, make sure you uh, do it wisely and uh, try to minimize your risk. But risk is there, so make sure you do well. Okay, and I'll see you in our class. And remember, don't forget to do your, uh, start working your uh, uh, feasibility papers due uh, very shortly. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.